What up data nerds, I'm Luke and welcome to my channel where I make data visualization easy. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about Lambda functions, also known as anonymous functions. And for this, it's an alternative to just normal functions where normal functions take a minimum of uh, two or more lines to make. With this, you can write a function within a single line and make it more concise and thus stick to the readability aspect of Python. So for this, we're gonna be covering three main topic areas. The first thing, I think it's important to understand the use case of Lambda functions and where you're gonna be seeing this out in the wild. Two, we're gonna be moving into actually writing Lambda functions as simple as possible and understanding their structure. And then the third portion, we're gonna get into actually applying it and using it in ways that I find that I use it quite frequently for data analysis. So with that, let's jump right into my computer. So here we are in my Mac with VS Code up and a Jupyter Notebook running. And the first thing we're gonna be going over is the typical use cases of Lambda. And so for this, in the last video, we were, uh, we did, we were talking about functions and we were actually able to dive into uh, the Office data set, which I have included a link below. But we went through and we basically counted the number of lines each of the actors had from the Office. And what we did is we put it into this dictionary, which I have right here at the bottom, and it shows you the different lines that each of the actors had. What I frequently accomplish in data analysis though is, well, I have this, but now I need to sort this list or sort this dictionary. And specifically, I need to sort it by the values. And so that's the task that we have, and that's where Lambda actually comes into play is, is using and sorting this. So in order to sort this dictionary, it's very common to use the sorted function. And what it does is you provide it two values to the sorted function, the first one being the iterable, the thing that you want to iterate through in order to sort, and then key, uh, the second argument, which you can specify and it will outline which item within a dictionary or a tuple or a list that you want to focus on to sort on. So keep in mind, right, we want to we want to sort on the values. So we're going to have to build some sort of function that pulls out the values for this. But first, before we get into that, let's talk about the, the iterable first. So looking at what we have, we have actor lines and do shift enter. And yeah, it's a, a dictionary, but dictionary necessarily isn't uh, necessarily something we can iterate through. So we'll use the actor lines dot items method. And what this will provide us is a list of tuples. So Michael, one, two, three, one, three, seven is a tuple. Pam, five, three, seven, five is a tuple and so on. So this is a more of an iterable that we want to use. And from this, we want to actually get a sort by this second uh, item in the list. So just going back to the function, we've defined, we're gonna be using the sorted function. We've defined what the iterable is. It's gonna be actors lines dot item. Now we have to do the function that's going to pull out this second item in the list. So trying to start with a function, we're gonna go, we'll put in sorted. And just to recap, we're gonna be using the actor lines dot items as the iterable. And then from there, we're gonna do key equal to, and we need to apply some sort of function right here. So in order to get what we want, we're gonna to have to make a, a function for this. So we'll say, we'll define the function and we'll say it's uh, get values and we're providing it some sort of item. And from there, we want to return item and we wanna return the first, uh, or sorry, the, the number one index, when number one index or the second item. So in this case, we're wanting to return the one, two, one, three, seven. So we have this function now, get values. So we'll put this function in here. So get values. And then if I run this, shift enter, what I will get is the values above. Um, so these dictionary items or this actor lines. Uh, now sorted from lowest to highest. And I can actually, if I wanted to, I could put it in, uh, put in this extra argument or reverse, change this to true and shift enter and it will reverse the order. So anyway, so I have this, but I have to write, as you can see, I had to write this function outside of it. So the readability of, of this 
uh, statement is not that good. So let's see how we can use lambda functions, the lambda use case, in order to make this more concise and readable and easier to implement. Okay, so for this, we're going to still use the, the sorted function, and we're still using that actor lines.items, and then for the function portion. So we have key equals to, and remember above, we inserted this function get values into here. But for this one, we're just gonna insert the lambda function right into here, and we want, uh, it's gonna be the item, and item, uh, one. And so this is the, the same function that we have above, and we're gonna go into more detail on this here in a little bit, but I just wanted to show. And if I do shift enter, same thing, uh, gets the values, and then if I wanted to uh, change it in the different order, I can just set reverse equal to true, and now Michael's up at top. But the main point is this, uh, and it's fine if you don't understand just yet because we're gonna go over lambda functions, but we can see that this is much more concise and also easier to read uh, once you understand lambda functions in order to sort some sort of dictionary or list. If I use in this, which isn't as concise and maybe uh, harder to read and may also cause you to delete this function and have problems later on. So moving on into lambda, the basics of lambdas. Let's look at a simple function and then how this would be written in a lambda function to make it even more concise. So let's say we had a function called return uh, number, and this is a uh, v1. And for this, we're just gonna input some sort of number, and I'll put num. And if, uh, I didn't mean to evaluate that, we go, we get the next line, and we go to return num. So for this, all we want to do is input a number and then return that same number. So if I were to run this of return number v1, and I input uh, number one, shift enter, I would get back one. And, but this is two lines of code, it's, it's not necessarily concise, so let's look at how we'd use this with lambda. So for lambda, you would do a, you would start it with lambda, and then for the input value, you put right next to it, so you'd put num, and then you'd put this colon, and then finally, uh, in this case, we want to return num, so whatever following the colon is basically like the return statement and shift enter, we can see that, hey, this is a function in itself. So if we assign this function to, we'll say, return number v2 uh, equal to this, and we do shift enter, now what we can do is we can take this return number v2 and provide it in parentheses, so activate this function, what we wanna input. So in this case, let's say 112. Shift enter, and bam. So this lambda thing can do it in a much more concise way and provides that value that we need. Just taking this a step further, I mean, we can also go as far as to just put this lambda function within parentheses, and we don't even have to assign it. We can make, maintain the anonymous uh, uh, anonymity about it, I don't know. Um, so th this is the function within parentheses and then we can feed it whatever we want. So we wanna feed it this, uh, I don't know, 36, doing shift enter. And we can see, hey, this function and then it's returning that 36 as we want it. So moving on though, let's say we have multiple values and, and let's build it on it even further. So let's say we, we wanna add numbers. We can do lambda and uh, lambda. Uh, X and Y, so we have two variables in this case that we're gonna be providing into this. And then from here, outside of the colon, we're gonna do what our operation that we wanna do. So we wanna add these numbers, so we'll do X, uh, X plus Y. And do Shift Enter to evaluate, and then yeah, we can do this add lambda function and then supply it the arguments that we want to activate this. So let's say we wanna do four plus six and do a shift enter, and we can see, hey, add four, six, and we get our 10. Let's keep on taking this further, and let's say we had this list, and uh, we routinely, whenever we have these types of lists, we want to return, for some reason, we want to return the third value in the list. So for this, we could make a lambda function, so get uh, third, and 
we could assign it to this lambda function. And for this, we're gonna supply it some sort of list. And from this list, we want the third item of that list. So I'd supply it that list, and then in brackets, I want the third item. So I put two because uh, Python is indexed at zero. And so that would give us the third item in that list. And if I want to feed this list to this Lambda function, so actor list, and then I run it, shift enter, we'll get Jim. So we'll get the third item. So if say this list changes, we can still get that third item whenever we feed whatever list we feed into this. Moving into the application portion of Lambda functions. So we have, we're gonna have two tasks for this. We're gonna have one, we're gonna have a list of numbers. And for those lists, we wanna extract only odd numbers. And then for the second portion, we're gonna have a list of phrases and we're gonna add a, a token statement to each one of those phrases. And if you recall from my first use case, um, it's frequent that Lambda is used within functions, uh, other functions in order to provide a value. So for this first one, we're gonna be using uh, uh, the first case of with a list of numbers extract only the odd numbers, we're gonna be using the filter function to extract the values from a list. And the basic structure or syntax of this is you have the filter function and then you feed another function inside of it. And then you have the iterable itself that you want to cycle through. So in this case, in our case, it's gonna be a list of numbers. And what happens is it will cycle through this list and this function will match up with these iterables. And whenever a value is returned as true that coordinates to an iterable or an item in an iterable, it will maintain that item in the list. So let's see what I'm saying and let's actually build it. So here's the list that we're gonna be using. Um, we're gonna be using Dwight Sales, and it's a, uh, a list of different numbers. And for this, remember, we wanna get the odd values, odd number values from this. So for this, we're gonna be using the filter function. So we'll start with filter, and then we need to input the function. Remember, we're using uh, lambda for this. So this is going to go through and each one of the items in the iterable, it's gonna to feed to this uh, function itself. And whether we need the function to return true or false. So for this Lambda function, we need to evaluate uh, for the numbers that we feed to it. Um, if the number is um, equal to, or if, uh, sorry, the number uh, divided by, or the modulus of two is equal to one. So therefore it is odd, it will return true. And then from there we'll feed the iterable. So it will be Dwight sales. Um, so each one of the items, so this 192 is gonna go through um, into this Lambda function. And from there it will divide it by two if it's, uh, if the remainder is equal to one, uh, which it won't be in that case, uh, but it won't be, so it'll be false, so it won't be retained in the list. But when we get to an odd number, it will be one, it'll be true, and we'll maintain that number in the list. So running shift enter, we get a filter object. And so we need to, we wanna see this filter object, so we can just, hey, say, let's convert this to a list. And do shift enter, and bam, there we have it. So we just use the filter function combined with Lambda in order to get only the odd numbers from Dwight sales. So I show this case because it's very important to understand that you're gonna have uh, in data analysis and data science, you're gonna have lists and other things that you need to filter for and apply a function to it. This would be the easiest manner to use a Lambda function combined with the filter uh, function to accomplish this. For the third portion, we're gonna be provided a list of phrases and we wanna add a token statement to the end of it. And uh, for this, we're gonna be using the map function. So similar above that we use filter, for this we're gonna be using map. And what it does is you have some iterable that you wanna go through. So in our case, it's gonna be a list of phrases and we wanna apply some sort of function to that, to each item in the list. And you'll definitely accomplish this or you'll need to do this in data analysis, uh, I find quite frequently. 
So looking at the list of phrases, um, I have a list of that's what she said phrases. And what we want to do is we want to, for each one of these phrases uh, with phrases within or strings within the list, we want to add that's what she said to the end of it. Let's see how we would do that with this map function. So recall map, we're gonna be using the function first and then the iterable. So going down here, I'll come in, I'll enter uh, map. We want the function first, so that'd be la uh, lambda, and we're providing it some string, right? And we want to take that string and we wanna add uh, that's what she said. Okay, so that's what the we wanna do. And from here, we want to now add the iterable, and that is uh, she said. And evaluating up above, shift enter, and then evaluating right here, shift enter. What we get is a map object. And similar to above, we need to, we want to see this, right? So we need to convert this to a list. And so I put the list within this, or inside of a list, and bam! There we go. So what it has done is it's going through and for the uh, values above for the she said, it has gone through and it's added to the end of it, that's what she said. And this is uh, demonstrating a, a performance of operations on strings, but just use your imagination. You could also be using that some sort of mathematical function to apply to a row of data, to a list, or to a dictionary. Bam, so there you have it, that is lambda functions. Just to reiterate the point, you're typically not going to be just using lambda functions by themselves. You're gonna be using them in conjunction with other functions in order to map or filter or even reduce, and you're gonna be using them in conjunction with those. So that's why it's very important to understand the basics of Lambda, but then also how you can apply it with other functions. So as always, smash that like button if you got value out of this video. Also, if you're following along in this tutorial series for the basics of Python, consider subscribing. And finally, drop a comment down below with any questions you may have with Lambda functions. And with that, We'll see you in the next one.